Howdy, AP Breakout. It's Miss Kosh. Um, today I want to work through Mr. Passwater's notes on uh, polar coordinates. Um, so trigonometry and polar coordinates is what he um, what this section is called. This is the uh, 313. I have my own notes, um, but I thought I would teach through his. So um, he gives a nice little introduction up here. I don't know that I want to read all that for you, but if you want to hit pause and read through this, you are welcome to do so. Um, meanwhile, let me just jump in and start working some problems and stuff. Okay, so in polar coordinates, a point, um, say they we're naming this one A, is defined as R theta, uh, where the absolute value of R represents the radius of the circle. Oh, okay. Um, and theta represents the measure of the angle in standard position whose terminal ray includes point A. Oh my goodness. Okay, so basically, um, we have... We have what we've always what we've done for a little while now is we have our x coordinate and our y coordinate, and then we can now find what angle is formed here, and then what's the radius. Um, I like how he made a distinction with this is the absolute value of r. I didn't really make that distinction, um, but he does say one of the cool, really cool points of using polar coordinates is that the same point can be represented many different ways. So I do talk a lot about um, a negative r value. I make my kids practice. Um, where they'll give me the, what do I have them do? I have them, if, if it's r comma theta, I'll have them give me where they're both positive. I'll have, me, have them give me where the radius is positive, but the angle is negative. So this would be, if our point is in quadrant one, our, um, we would have a positive angle if we got there this way, so coming up like this, um, and then we'd, and moving out this way. So that would be um, the positive positive. For a positive negative means we got there the negative way, we went all the way around. And then I also have them find the negative positive where we have a negative radius and a positive um, angle. And then I'll have them give me negative negative. So I make them practice giving me four ways to name every, well not every, but the point, I give them a point and then they have to find, they have to either I'll give them, I'll plot the point for them and they have to give me all four or I'll give them one. I, I kind of have a chart where we like to practice this. Um, so I haven't talked about how you get negative angles, but our negative radius, we know how to get negative angles. Um, but I'm betting that that comes in his notes. So, okay, on the first one, plot and label the following polar coordinates on the polar coordinate grid above. Um, so this first one is A. Um, A is the point two comma pi over three. Um, now the thing that's so confusing about these, in my opinion, is that we always write the ordered pair as R theta, but the input value is the theta, and the output value is r. Um, and our whole life when we graph things x and y, you'll remember that the input is x and the output is y. So we're used to going, well, let's find x first and then find y. But here we have to kind of come to the second thing. So when if I were to graph this point, I would come up and say, okay, where's pi over three? Oh, he labeled it for us, that was very nice. And then I need a radius of two, which he also labeled. So here is the point a. Can you see that I labeled that an A? Whatever. Okay, the next one, we're at 1, 3 pi over 2. So 3 pi over 2, we know to be down here. We have a radius of 1. That's the bold one. And so this is the point B. Uh, C is 3 comma 4 pi over 3. So 4 pi over 3 would be this one right here. It's across from pi over 3. And we have a radius of 3. I think this would be 1, 2. The 3 is all the way here on the outside. Something like this. And this is point C. D now has a negative um, angle, negative pi over 6, so we've come this way, and we've got a radius of 2. Okay, so we are somewhere right here is the point D. Yep. Um, notice on here, they give us, they've taken, um, I was talking today with my kids, we have, this is pi over 2, and notice this pi over 2 section has been divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 chunks. So each of those is a sixth of pi over 2 which is pi over 12. So you can think of this as one pi over 12, and then two pi over 12 reduces to pi over six, three pi over 12, four pi over 12. This would be five pi over 12. So it's the unit circle with an extra pi over 12 line thrown in. Well, a few of them, but one, you know, whatever. Four extra lines, but yeah, there we go. Okay, um, the next one, we're looking at something like this. They want us to find the point. 2 pi over 4, so pi over 4 is here, here comes 2, this is the point A, um, 2 and negative 7 pi over 4, so negative um, 7 pi over 4 means I've gone do -do 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 around this way, and I still have a radius of 2, this is also the point B. Um, then they said 2, 9 pi over 4, well 9 pi over 4 
is um, not unit circle friendly. Well, it is, but it isn't. It's beyond, um, we've gone, if I take nine pi over four and I subtract away two pi, I'm back to pi over four. So this is coterminal, so this is also the point C. What do you think? I bet he did this again here. So five pi over four, it gives me this one down here. But now, okay, so five pi over four, here's how we talk about our negative radius. Five pi over four means that I'm in quadrant three and I'm going deeper and deeper and deeper into quadrant three as I move. So if I have a radius of one, I'm here. If I have a radius of two, I'm here. If I have a radius of three, I'm here. Um, but now if I want to have a radius of negative two, that means I turn around and go the opposite direction. One, two, so this is also the point D. So plot and label the following polar coordinates. They were all the exact same point. Um, I will say I don't typically use something like this. Um, you can, but I tend to write out, as I was mentioning with my plus and minus sort of scenario, I will tell everybody, I'll tell my students, negative two pi is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to two pi. So I want all of these angle values to be between, you just get one time around the circle, either in the positive direction or the negative direction. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't do this. I just tend to ask it slightly differently. Okay, um, illustrate how a single point on a corner plane can be expressed in many different ways. In fact, there are infinitely many. Yes, there are infinitely many. Um, you just have to have, you could, you could say, um, let's see, plot the point three, five pi over six. So five pi over six is gonna be this line right here. Three seems to be all the way out the, on the outside of the circle. Um, you could say anything that's three comma five pi over six plus two pi k, where k is any integer. That's gonna give me I'm multiple, that, that the exact same value. Um, what I think is more interesting or what I think is more challenging for students to figure out is how to do um, a negative radius. Um, so if I would say, so if we do positive, positive, let's do a positive, negative, let's do a negative, positive, and let's do a negative, negative. I'm gonna keep us between um, negative two pi and two pi. Oh, could you see what I was doing? Okay, um, so positive, positive, we got there with a positive radius of three, um, and then the positive angle came this way, and that was five pi over six. Okay, now we want a positive radius, but we want to have a negative angle. So I have to come this way, do, 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 do. and so that is a negative seven pi over six and a positive three. Now the other one, okay, now we get to a negative radius and I think this is a little bit more confusing, but what that means is I wanna be, I wanna end up in quadrant two. So I need to find how do I get to this angle here in quadrant four so that I can turn around and go the opposite direction. Well, the positive way to get there is 11 pi over six and then turn around and go negative. So we'll have a negative three and on a, a positive 11 pi over six and then a negative three also. And then how did I get here the negative way? Going like that, that's a negative pi over six. Okay, um, let me see, did I, did I answer his question? Uh, plot the point, okay, done. Then write the polar coordinates for the point two different ways. Oh, I did three more. Okay, so here was the one that he had given me. Um, and then I came up with three more right here, plus the fact that I could add two pi to any of these. Um, I, I don't even, I don't even do this very often because I think that's um, enough of a challenge. Okay, let's see. So now we're gonna talk about how to express this point, um, how to relate the two of them. Um, okay, and this was, I, we saw this come, um, come out a lot in the three, two, three, three notes, I thought. Um, but what we'll do is, I bet it's at the top of his next page. Let's see if I'm right. Ah, yes, okay. So the next page, he talks about cosine of theta. Cosine is going to be x over, over r. Sine is going to be y over r. And so therefore, we can multiply um, both sides by r. And so x equals um, r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. And hopefully, we've already, we're already familiar with that a little bit. Um, okay, so convert the following points from, rec from polar to rectangular. So um, one way to do this is just to think, where am I on the unit circle? Pi is over here. I have a radius of two. So what's this coordinate? This is the point negative two comma zero. Okay, let's use the formula. We could say that this is the point um, two cosine pi comma two sine pi. Cosine of pi is negative one times two is negative two. Uh, sine of pi is zero times two is still zero. So you can plug this, you know, work this out and then come to up with the answers or you can plot it and see what you know. Okay, this one I'll start for cosine five pi over three comma four sine five 
5 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3, where is that? That is down here-ish. Okay, we went sort of like that. Over a little, this would be 1 half, and down a lot, this is negative root 3 over 2. You can't see that on top of there, my bad. Um, and so the cosine is a positive 1 half, so 4 times 1 half is 2. Um, the, the sine was a negative root 3 over 2, which gives us a negative 2 root 3. Yep, is that going to give me something in quadrant 4, positive, negative? Yep. Okay, and then this one we want to be, well, we're at 7 pi over 6 is going to be here, but then we have to go negative, so we're going to end up somewhere over here. Um, so I should have positive, positive. Okay, so let's see. Let's do the formula. And, okay, cosine of 7 pi over 6, cosine is the x value. We went over a lot and down a little, so that's um, negative 3 times a negative oh, root 3 over 2. My bad. Okay, negative 3 times a negative 1 half, because we went down a little. There's another parentheses. So I'm at positive 3 root 3 over 2 and a positive 3 halves, which makes sense here. I went over a lot and up a little. And there we go. Okay, so then the next part we want to go from, so that was going from polar to rectangular, um, and then now we want to go from rectangular to polar. And so we can use the Pythagorean theorem and notice that we have x squared plus y squared equals r squared, um, which would imply that r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. That might be helpful, it might not. Um, and then we talked about, we know that tangent of theta is y over x. Now my kids today were like, well, can't I use sine or cosine? Yes, but that means you have to use r. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get a formula for r. Um, for we, We're trying to get a polar, excuse me. We're trying to get a formula where the polar part is set equal to only rectangular variables. So polar part set equal to only rectangular variables. We don't want r to show up here. So while it's true that we can manipulate these formulas a little bit, we're going to, we want... We want a, um, an equation where the polar is equal to only rectangular and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, so it says, whenever you are converting coordinate from one system to another, always check out the, the first point. Check out the first the point first and check that your answer makes sense. Okay. Um, sure. Um, the thing we want to be careful about is that this is going to be, um, depending on which quadrant we're in, arc tangent um, will only give you an answer in quadrants one and four. So if you need something in two or three, you have to add pi. Okay, so what I would do for this one is I would say, well, this is negative two, positive two, and I am really good with my geometry. That's a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which tells me I'm in the pi over four family, which tells me um, this is, first of all, it tells me this is two root two, and that this angle getting here was three pi over four. So the positive, positive answer to this is that it's a positive root two, two root two, sorry and then a positive 3 pi over 4. There are other things that are um, accurate, and um, if you want to use Desmos to check your work, Desmos won't graph polar coordinates, but if you, so if you want to plot the point r theta, and you're trying to use Desmos, it won't do that. But what you can do is you can graph r cosine theta comma r sine theta. This coordinate it'll plot. And so if you, um, if you, can, you can switch the mode to polar and then plot these um, this way. Sometimes I do that to get points to show up where I want them. Anyway, there's an idea. Um, okay, so the next one, I want positive 1, negative root 3. So root 3 is bigger. Um, that's a negative root 3, the 1. So 1 root 3, that means this is 2. That's a 30, 60, 90, where this is the 60 degree angle, um, which tells me that this is pi over 3 away from the axis. Um, so the best way r is 2 theta was 5 pi over 3. There are other ways to name these, but there you go. This one, 0, negative 5. Okay, so our radius is 5, our angle is 3 pi over 2. That's fun. Okay, complex numbers, here we go. Um, we've talked about, this is the rectangular form of a complex number where it's a plus bi, where a and b are constants. Um, a complex number can be understood as a point in a complex plane and can be de determined by corresponding rectangular or polar coordinates. Okay. When the complex number has rectangular coordinates a, b, it can rep be represented as a plus bi. Okay, so this, I like to think of this as the real axis, and this is the imaginary axis. 
So we're just plotting, this would be the point three plus two I, which, oh, okay. That's what they said. Um, earlier in these notes, we learned, okay, so X is still R cosine theta, Y is still R sine theta. This becomes really important. We'll see this again um, when we do some vector. Vectors won't be tested by AP, but it still is important. Um, sometimes we see this in the parametric world also. Um, it just, this is relevant a lot. Um, okay, so when um, when the complex number with has polar coordinates R theta, it can be expressed as R cosine theta plus I R sine theta. And the shortcut, because mathematicians are inherently lazy, is that we will, you could factor out an R, like this, and then what we'll do is, um, I have definitely seen this in, well, I think it's pretty understood, but we can take the C, the I, the S, right, from right here, and we will call this R cis theta. And this, R cis theta, expands out to these two things here. Um, I am most, comfortable because this shows up in my IB curriculum. I'm most comfortable with this version and this version. What I just wrote out, distributing R through makes me like twitch. <laughs> so I'm working on that for pre-cal, but whatever. Um, okay. A complex number is represented by a point in the complex plane. The complex number has the rectangular coordinates, negative two, negative two, negative two, negative two is down here. So negative two, negative two. So this is a 45, 45, 90. So this is two root two. Did we already do a problem like that? Oh, yeah, we had twos again over here. Okay, um, what's one way to express the complex number using its polar coordinates r theta? Well, it would be the complex number 2 root 2 cosine. This is now 5 pi over 4. So this is the way that I have seen um, uh, my brain stopped. AP Classroom, write this out. Okay. What, this is what I've seen them write. What I would write, because I'm lazy, I mean efficient, is I would say it's um, uh, 2 root 2 cis 5 pi over 4. Okay? Um, a complex number is represented by a point in the complex plane. Using polar coordinates, the complex number can be expressed as this. Express the complex number using its rectangular coordinates. Okay, so I can either think, where am I on the unit circle? My radius is 4, and I'm at 7 pi over 6. So this is um, like my 30 degree angle, this is the 90, so this would be negative two, and this would be negative two root three. Um, and so therefore this is negative two root three is the real part. Um, the, I, the imaginary part is negative two, so it's minus two i. So just knowing my unit circle and my special right triangles, I can get here, I would argue, pretty easily. But I can also say, okay, well, let's simplify this out. Cosine of seven pi over six, I went over a lot in the negative direction, so it's negative root three over two plus i times four, and then sine is negative one half. Cleaning this up, this becomes a negative, there's my negative two root three, plus this is negative, oh, minus, I lied to you, minus two i, and that matches what I saw right there. I hope that was helpful. Um, I did make a whole worksheet, um, and I made a 20 minute video yesterday explaining why do we care. So. Pre-Cal sets this up and it's like, oh, look, you can go from rectangular to polar. Look, you can change this number and write it different ways. But they don't tell us why we care. Um, and so in the IB, in my IB world, we have to work more with this and, and you'll see why we care to put it into polar form. Um, and so I made an extension video, um, definitely not for the weak <laughs> or the faint of heart, um, but it's a good fun challenge. I mean, and it's a nice extension. You can see why we care about this, but it is definitely uh, well, according to my understanding, not going to be covered on the AP test. So anyway, let me know how I can help you. Go practice, 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 um, and come back for more videos. Bye.